All right, let's get into our first discussion now. Nigerian authorities are set on to in reintroduce toll gates across major federal highways in the country. Now, but Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says the toll collection will only be deployed where highways have been reconstructed uh, to international standards. Uh, Fashola disclosed this when he appeared before uh, the Senate Committee on Federal Roads Maintenance Agency, FERMA, uh, chaired by Senator uh, Magnus Abe. All right, when operational, the toll gates will be managed by the private sector, but government will design a software to monitor vehicular movement and motorists will be able to pay toll using their phones. The minister also disclosed that only 800 million naira out of the 25 billion naira 2017 budget appropriated for FEMA has so far been released. Already Nigerians are paying tolls on the roads, it's just that they are not paying it to the government. On every road you go now, when you drive around, you find all these boys with uh, with wheelbarrow and, uh, yeah, yeah. and shovel on the road. They are collecting tolls from Nigerians with red flag. And it's, yes, and you pay there. And yes, and in some of these places, if you don't pay, you could be in trouble, in, in some danger. So people are already being forced to pay. Roads are depreciating assets. They have design lifespans after which it is no longer efficient and cost effective to continue to maintain them. In places where we cannot build the roads because we didn't get funding on time, we're trying to see what the contractors can do to make them more durable. Uh, we have funding from the Sukuk, but disbursement hasn't taken place because of the process tied to it. We are thinking of a strategic initiative to attain a healthy balance between in-house road maintenance and contracting. I would figure that if in five years time we can do 50% of all our works in-house, that, that would be a good achievement indeed. Okay, very uh, interesting uh, outing there. Uh, you know, BRF speaking with the Senate there on this return or planned return of tolls in Nigeria. According to Magnus Abe, Nigerians are already being told anyway. But so, that's, how, that's how it is. You if, if you're traveling to, uh, to parts of uh, the east or even parts of the southwest mm -hmm. through Oshun and some, of, and some other places, uh, so some of the states in yes. the south, uh, southwest, you see in, in some of the federal highways. You see those young men with You see young men with wheelbarrows trying to, and then the, the mountain roadblock. Oh, so yes. you have to stop you, you, somehow. You, be, you better pay or there will be no... All right, uh, Charles Ideho is still here mm. with us. Um, I wonder what you make of this planned uh, return of toll gates to the uh, 38 points where we originally had toll gates. The question some are already asking is, why were those toll gates pulled down in the first place if they were actually backed by law, according to uh, you know what we found out? Well, first of all, let me... Um, assure Nigerians that the reintroduction of the toll gate is not a death sentence at all because mm. it's in line with uh, global best practice everywhere, where you, whether, it's the, uh, whether it's Asia, whether it's uh, in Africa, um, whether it's Europe. Uh, tolling of road is something that uh, is, is very, very important. Um, it helps to <coughs> take off the burden from the government. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, in, in uh, <coughs> Bangladesh, Bangladesh has about five uh, uh, toll bridges and about three main uh, toll, tolls in, in our, across the country, Dakar and the rest of them. Mm. Then you also go to um, Singapore, you go to Malaysia, you go to in Indonesia, even if you go to South Africa, uh, Tanz Tanzania, um, uh, even Morocco. They have yeah. Morocco, they have the one they call um, this from Marrakesh to Morocco to uh, what it was, was all these uh, cities Casablanca. in Morocco. Casablanca. So, but the, the difference over there is that most of, most of these are handed over to private organizations mm -hmm. because of what is called appropriate management. Yes. What happened in Nigeria? Because it, the, for instance, let's talk about the Badon Lagos Expressway, mm -hmm. which was hand, which was commissioned in 78 uh, at the twilight of Obasanjo's John's uh, first coming mm -hmm. when he was the head of head state of at that time. Mm -hmm. The road is about about 115 kilometers long. And then because it, it connect, everywhere you're coming from, you, must, uh, you are coming to Lagos, you must pass through that mm -hmm. road. And it's about one hour, one hour journey or so. So the road was very smooth. But they now said, well, because it was going to be enormous for government to maintain, so they had to put those at 
just three the, points. Yes. The Lagos end, the, the, end, the Ogun, Ogun, that's uh, the Arabo yeah, area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you find another one at the uh, entrance to Ibadan. Mm -hmm. What it meant was that at least just pay something. When you gather this morning, it can help for maintenance of the road. But what did really happen over time? People started making money from it because of the usual issue of the sea of the corruption in civil service. People will go to Shomulu and print uh, their own tickets. So you wouldn't know you wouldn't know the, the, the difference between the government ticket or and all the all the all the individual yeah. tickets. So rather than make the money for government, you find that a lot of people you find a lot of uh, millionaires being raised through those those dubious means. Mm. So which was why Obasanjo when he came back again. The same Obasanjo that introduced the tour was the one who dismantled the tour, mm. tour because he knew that that wasn't as that wasn't in line with the the original you know, idea. Idea. Mm. So the, the the idea was jettison, and then you know, instead of making money for government for us to be able to maintain the road, people were now making money for. for Imagine the Lagos Ibadan If you're able to toll it, for instance, and then you get up to about about because of the volume of traffic, mm -hmm. you make about two billion naira every year, for instance. I mean, you wouldn't be talking about every year you're budgeting about two billion for, for so you can find out as as a vegetable means to maintain the government doesn't even have to have to talk about if you hand it over to this there's what they call BOT, it's a build, build operate, operate and, and transfer. transfer. Mm -hmm. So this company who are doing do that, we have to take the, the burden off the government. Well that's what us, we Fashola is saying now that uh, it will be handled by Yeah, yeah but, but, but Fashola has an antecedent. I mean he the, 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 there was an Lego who said we built it, one foot of road, he would told it. He did that in Lagos very successfully. Well you see mm. when it comes to Putting forth these ideas, telling Nigerians how it's going to work, is, it sounds beautiful. Very beautiful on paper. Very beautiful mm. every time. But when it comes to the implementation, we'll begin to understand or we'll begin to hear some of the challenges, some of the issues that are inherent in the system. Now, mm. we, you, you were talking about the uh, uh, toll earlier on. In some of those tolls, we used to travel and then we, see, we, we saw all of those, those things that yes. time. There was no camera to monitor how many no. cars passed through yeah. the toll no every day, no data and all mm. of that. But mm. going into this now, what should be or what can be different to make Nigerians, like you say, it's not a death sentence. That's right. The idea originally is a good one, mm. but the implementation is what Nigerians are going to see now. Exactly. What, what should be different? Well, he has said, he has said there's going to be a software. <clears throat> so that software yeah. will be the number one difference. Mm. Because then, when we, what we had then was just uh, the analog type, where you, you know, yeah, just it's a, in every system, when, when you have men interacting with men, mm. there will always be an element of this circumvention, is, circumvention of mm. this. If you go to Singapore today, the, when you get to the airport, mm. in most cases, you have no interaction with a human being. No beings. interface with Everything anybody. Everything is, uh, is uh, computerized. Oh, yeah. So if you also do that, for instance, people can even pay in advance, like something like a debit card. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can front load your card, yes. or you get it to swipe it, then you don't pay money to any individual. The thing goes straight to a government cover, so which can even be managed. So that software that is being expected, mm -hmm. that may bring about the total cleanup of the system so that we don't have to interface with human beings that will have these uh, this, uh, criminal tendencies to always shortchange the government, shortchange the system. Yes, but the question that some Nigerians are asking, would this amount to double taxation? Uh, recall when Obasanjo increased uh, pump uh, price yeah. mm -hmm. of petrol. Uh, yeah. He yeah. said one naira 50 kobo or thereabout would be actually um, set aside for, for road, road maintenance. maintenance. What has happened to those funds? That, that and just this government has been mm. in place for like two years. Yep. Have they been collecting that money? Where is the money? Where are those funds? That's the question the that, that Nigerians are asking. So it if is. you have one naira 50 cobalt set aside to fix the roads, and the roads are still the way they mm -hmm. are. I, one, of, one, of, one of the problems we always have in this country is, uh, we usually, when we have very beautiful policies, as Mike, Mike mm. said earlier, the implementation is always a problem. I am not sure many people will remember who are watching will remember that there was even a policy, a poli such like a policy. Mm. And then those who collect the money, what happened, happened to the money? Investing. But it's not too late in the day, as we have entered into a new era, which Fashola has been proposed, is proposing now. Mm. Hopefully, the new software will capture all this area so that the thing can be properly channeled. Having Fashola there, I mean, when we look at his antecedent in Lagos, mm -hmm. the way he successfully managed and told the roads in Lagos, look at the lucky as. And it the was body loan, a, a body uh, loan as, so it was, this, uh, that, that gives me hope that he being there, it will 
it will, it will engender Well, when it, when, it, when it comes to his track records in Lagos mm -hmm. State, it is no doubt. Everybody was happy. And That's right. that was why when he was made minister for uh, power housing, everyone said, wow, yeah, and all of that. But it's two years now. Nigerians yes. are still looking forward to his effective implementation of all the beautiful things he said. Like you said earlier on when we're... Any government in power should fix, any government in it's power should fix power or fix electricity in six months. Mm -hmm. But here we are. But, but the thing is that, you see, that's, that's, that's the problem with being politicians and mm. being technocrats. If Ashola were to be a politician, this statement would not be made. You know what I'm but saying? But isn't so, he a politician? No, he is not. He's, <laughs> he's not a politician? No, he's not. He's not. When you look at... Look, After it, being it a governor? A it takes a technocrat <laughs> to come out with these beautiful ideas as we mm. just listen to. You know, we are, at the wee, we are in the wee hours of the election year. Oh. A politician will not tell you want to toll gate when, it's ele when, it, when you have elections coming. Because they know that when you toll that, people will not understand and it might cost you victory yeah. at the polls. So that's why it takes a fashioner who is not a politician, as I said, to, to come, come out to say beautiful this. ideas. But, but, but I'm but, telling but, you, the reason is that mm. it, uh, what my fear, the fear I entertain is that fashioner being who he is, Politicians may hijack it because mm -hmm. there are people who have, who have become disgruntled that they have not got anything from government. So when you introduce to now, who will he give private companies? Who are going to be the private companies? Politicians. Well, according to him, it's going, to be, thrown, it's going to be thrown open and that will be after thrown the roads open. are fixed. How long it will take the we don't you know, know. all look, look at how much, how much he said just now has been released. Eight out of, 800, out of, 800, out of 25 out of billion. 25 billion only. So, I think maybe you see this broken source, this broken that is stifling whatever government wants to do is something that is an abattress we must deal with. If not, or beautiful, beautiful policies, but the implementation, not because they don't, they're not willing to, but because the system has been put in place to make sure they continually suppress whatever movement the government wants to make from point A to the next point. Uh, if you uh, don't deal with this abattress, what, what should be, assessment, in, in all of the, the whether the successes of Fashola in office as a minister or uh, 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 Amechi yeah. as a minister or, uh, or a fire me, whoever, as the case may be, mm. the credit goes to the president. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, what should be the president's disposition in all of this? Because whatever Fashola is saying we're about to do, we're about to do, it is the government that is, that is doing it, not Fashola as a person. It's collective. And all of that. Mm. So what should be the president's disposition to this? When you say, well, the system, a system has been put in place in such a way that it becomes so difficult, the president has all the powers. To do what? To do anything. Mm. To, do, to do most things. Yeah. To not, do not, anything. Not, not anything. In politics, well, it, it is said... It is, yeah, but the point there is, it is said that it, the, the, the government, the only thing the government cannot do is to change a man to a woman and change a woman to a man. No, because um, there, are, there are laws that will prevent tyrannical tendencies of the, gov of the, of the president, whoever. Yeah. The tyran tyranny can reign where there, are, where there is rule of law. But let me tell you what the government should do. That's the question you asked. Yes. Look, any government who can make, or any president who can make a success of whatever position he has in Nigeria, has to divorce himself from any relationship with woman, with wife, with in-laws, and with hangers on. Mm. The president of the Philippines, Philippines was, was worse than, 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 than we are in Nigeria. What the man said, to make sure that the, everybody understood what he said, if my son is found to be culpable, kill him. But his son was found to be culpable? The, the Duterte, are you talking Duterte, about Duterte? That's what I'm saying, but and but, there was but, some but kind did, of. Did he shield him? No, he. But he uh, openly. He, 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 did, you, did you say he shielded him? Mm. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, anybody who wants to do right will say, look, if it is my toe, just like the Bible say, if it is my eye, one right eye that will cause me not to go to heaven, cut it off. Mm. Until we get a president who is determined to be able to come out to say, look, you know what? Whether it's my wife, whether it's my anybody, I just let the bulldozer <coughs> run, run, run over them. We are not but then again, that would mean you have provided all the fundamentals, all the basic things that should be in place. Well, so that anyone hmm. who circumvents or flouts, then, you know, uh, government would be justified Directive. to mm. to punish them. Yeah, but that's but when said, the fundamentals yeah, are, are not there. there. The, the fundamentals are there, but the thing is, the thing is that it's about interest. Mm. You have ethnic interest. Mm. When okay. you put somebody there, oh, because somebody, if you remove somebody there, for instance, now, if Fashola, who mm. wants to do something, maybe he goes to the north, for instance, wants to do something there, oh. 
the southern is against the northern interest. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that is that a problem is we have like to live with. If you have an Igbo man, oh, maybe for instance, Igbo man decided to do, talk about, uh, uh, would you remember Dr. What's his name now, Dr. The man that was, the man that was put at the um, uh, Nigerian Population Commission who was talking about getting the actual uh, census figure for the very yeah, first time. Um, Odumegu. Odumegu, mm. yeah. First was Odumegu. It was removed. They said mm. an Igbo man is coming to now tell you know what to do. So yeah. on, until we have been able to divorce ourselves from the issue of ethnic, uh, ethnic leanings, mm -hmm. parochial leanings, yeah. all these interests, Mike, <laughs> Sad to say, okay. we, we can't we, get out of this point. All right, we point. have to leave you here now. Uh, let's wait and see how uh, this I thing is so. going to play out in the coming months, in the coming year, That's right. and all of that. Well, in the words of Charles, it's not a death sentence. It's not, it's not a death sentence. Death sentence. Exactly. Okay. Charles Ideho, thank, thank you very much for thank coming you, on the you program. Thank you so much. All right. We'll come up with our next topic shortly. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. All right, you're welcome back. The Ondo State Amnesty Committee recently announced the expiration of the ultimatum given to armed youths to surrender their arms for the amnesty program. Mm. Now, the Ondo State Governor, Ruti Miyakiridolu, gave the militants a 21-day period of grace in respect of the program. Some militants who had surrendered their arms in several camps promised not to return to their old ways if the government does not uh, does the needful. Now, but the presidency is worried over the amount of illegal arms recovered from the militants and has called for a meeting with security chiefs and governors from the Niger Delta region. Now, the meeting will take place uh, tomorrow, of course. Well, joining us on the phone is the Commissioner for Lands and Housing. He is also the Chairman on Doe State Amnesty Program, uh, Donald Ojugo. Good morning and thanks for joining us. If uh, the Chairman on Doe Amnesty Program can hear us, please. Uh, good morning to you. Uh, All right. It doesn't I guess, seem that I guess he the can line hear. just went dead Yes, again. but of course, uh, the... the you were not too long ago raised the alarm over the uh, number of um, you know uh, small and uh, light weapons mm -hmm. in the west african region saying that 70 percent of those and that's about 350 million actually mm -hmm. is domiciled in nigeria. in nigeria how do these that's arms, alarming it, truly truly alarming and mm -hmm. you, of course i mean it's been linked to the rise in uh, non-state uh, actors like uh, boko haram mm -hmm. uh, 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 Niger Delta militants yeah. and the rest I, of it. I hear he's back he's on back now. on the line. Yeah. Hello, Donald. Good morning to you. Donald Ojugo, uh, chairman on Doe State Amnesty Program. Good morning. It's good to have you on the show. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it's um, heartening to hear that um, some of these uh, young men, militants, have actually downed or surrendered their arms. But government is worried at the number of arms in uh, the system. Uh, tell us what you have in place to ensure that as they drop these arms, they don't go back to them. Well, thank you so much. Uh, first and foremost, let me correct an impression here. I am not the chairman of the Undo State Amnesty Committee. The chairman of the committee is the deputy governor, Honorable Alfred Agbola Ajayi is the deputy governor and he's also the chairman of the Ondo State Amnesty Committee. I am just the chairman of the Media and Public Enlightenment Subcommittee of the, of the, of the main committee. So I think you okay. have to correct that impression. All right, thank you very much for that. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah well, co well, coming to your question, I think it's, 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 it's an all-round thing. The, initi the initiative was taken by the state governor you want to recall that as soon as they came into power, this government came into power, it inherited a series of security challenges, and it stopped by that uh, situation. The governor, in his own wisdom, decided to put in place a committee to interface with these militants. Of course, the high point, the high point of the of the of the problems that culminated in that decision was the kidnap of the FS6 students, and uh, the governor was contacted. And because most of these uh, hoodlums, the criminals who are involved in these nefarious activities, in most cases 
often claim to have hailed from Ondo State, particularly Esteldo and Ilaje, local government areas. And it had to take the bull by the horn to ensure that something was done, and indeed something was done. So in that regard, he directed, he directed the deputy governor of the state, who is also from that area, to interface with these militants. The first thing the deputy governor did in his, in his wisdom and by the grace of God, he succeeded in securing the release of these Igola students to the admiration of everybody, even to the admiration of the international community. That was on the directive of the governor. But one of, one of the high points of negotiations was that they also wanted to, these criminals insisted that they wanted to be free, that they were tired of living this life of crime, and that if the state government to broker an arrangement between them and the federal government for them to be included in the amnesty program. Well, the, the, the governor, in his own wisdom, also felt that it was not a, it was not a request that was out of place. So they pursued it with all vigor and with every sense of sincerity and purpose. At the end of the day, the federal government, the presidency particularly, acceded to the request of the state government, and they were granted amnesty. In on the part of the state, particularly on the part of the amnesty committee in the state. Yes. Yeah. These militants have played their own part. They have done their own part. They have been able to fulfill their own part of the deal. So the question you ask directly, mm -hmm. the answer is simple. The state government is committed, particularly the amnesty committee, is on top of the situation. And because of the ability and capacity of the chairman of the amnesty committee, the deputy governor of the state, Honorable Alfred Agola Ajayi, a lot of things have been put in place. I am not mandated to divulge most of these things uh, to the media, but I believe strongly that a lot of things, a lot of uh, uh, programs have been packaged. As I am talking to you right now, uh, just about 10 hours ago, we, 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 the committee, alongside all the security chiefs, the, the heads of the security agencies in the state, held a meeting with the with the leaders of these various militant groups who turned in their arms. The meeting held up till around 8 p.m. last night, and they left. These are boys were, who were either two. Okay. All right. Donald, yeah, Donald, let, let me ask you this. Uh, you, you talked about what, what is really the promise? What are the promises given to these people? And now that they have dropped their arms, or they are dropping their arms, as the case may be, what, what, what are they going to be involved with? What are the, what's the packages? What are the programs lined up for them? Well, the programs lined up for them will not be different from the programs, will not be too different from the programs that have been in existence as far as the Amnesty Committee is concerned. But you can, we can also recall that in every situation, there are bound to be improvements. The state government is also pushing for the possibility of improved or uh, enhanced program for this military. But the most important thing, which is, of course, the costless thing man can enjoy, uh, any, any individual can enjoy in his life, is freedom. We promise this wise freedom as long as they were ready to drop their arms, and this freedom has been given to them. They are, they are enjoying their freedom. For the first time, most of them, in about eight or nine years, who couldn't come out from the creeks, because they also they have played their own part by surrendering their arms, they, they, they now enjoy freedom. So freedom is the most important thing that the state promised them that it has given to them. That is number one. Like I said, I am not mandated to divulge most of the programs being packaged. We have to wait for what government will do. Government has been engaging these youths for about three or four months. I think we have to wait for the outcome of uh, of whatever program that government is going to package for them. We don't want to, we don't want to jump the ship. All right, of course, uh, it is obvious that um, amnesty program is more of a temporary measure. In terms of ensuring that weapons don't find their way into Ondo State, for example, like you said, uh, many of these kidnappers and militants uh, are traced to the uh, Ijo Ilaje uh, crisis of the 1998-99 um, uh, crisis. 
what are you doing actually to protect the Ondo borders and what would you recommend uh, to government beyond Ondo in terms of ensuring that arms don't come into uh, the country and of course uh, Ondo state? Well, thank you so much. My response to that question is as simple as the fact that the security agencies and heads of security agencies who have been very cooperative throughout the amnesty program are still on top of the situation. I am not a security man. None of us in the amnesty committee, including the chairman of the amnesty committee, is a security personnel. But we work hand in hand in conjunction with all the heads of the security agencies. And I believe they have mapped out their plans. Some of us are privy to some of these plans, but I don't think it will be, it will be, it, it, it will be appropriate for me to, for me to say these are the plans these security agencies have, have, have mapped out to ensure that the borders are well protected. Of course, it's a security situation, and one has to be very careful divulging information to the public. All right, we do I understand that, that uh, about 2,000 militants, of course, have surrendered their arms, and that was within this 21-day um, ultimatum given by uh, Roti Miyake Dulu, the governor of the state. Is it still open? We know that it expired on Wednesday or so. If, I mean, is, is it still open to more militants surrendering their arms? Well, it, 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 I don't think it is open, but uh, the government is not advised to any security advice that may come from relevant security quarters. But as far as the period of grace given by, 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 by Mr. Governor is concerned, it didn't close last week on the 30th, that which was uh, Thursday last yeah. week. It closed on 30th last week. So nothing, nothing, nothing is being, is being surrendered as at, as at now. Okay. All right. Uh, Donald Jugo, the chairman, media, publicity and enlightenment subcommittee of the uh, amnesty program in Ondo State. Thank you very much for talking to us.